Hey Chiefs, welcome back to the Whiteout Survival Beginner's Book. Today we're diving deep into one of the most exciting alliance events in the game, the Crazy Joe event. If you've been looking to maximize your points and get the best rewards possible, you've come to the right place. Stick around because later in this video, I'll be sharing pro strategies on how to get the highest amounts of points possible, including some insider tips that most beginner players overlook. So what exactly is the Crazy Joe event? Crazy Joe is an alliance event where you and your alliance members band together to protect each other's cities from waves of bandit attacks that last for around 40 minutes. It's about teamwork, strategy, and maximizing your rewards. This event happens twice every two weeks, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That means you have two opportunities to participate and earn rewards every other week. Make sure to mark your calendar so you don't miss out. Let's talk about how the event works. Crazy Joe will send up to 20 waves of bandits to attack all Alliance members. The more waves you successfully defend against, the better the rewards you'll receive. But here's where it gets interesting. On waves 7, 14, and 17, only online members will be attacked. So make sure you're online during these critical waves. On waves 10 and 20, the bandits will target your Alliance HQ exclusively. It's crucial to have your strongest player lead the defense rally during these waves. To successfully defend the wave, you need to kill more than 50% of the enemy troops. The points you earn depend solely on the percentage of Joe's troops you kill. If you achieve 100% kills, you get 100% of the possible points for that wave. Now here's an important note. If you suffer two defeats, your city won't be attacked by the remaining waves. However, you can still earn points by supporting your allies, which we'll get into shortly. Also, keep in mind that shields don't work during the Crazy Joe event, so don't rely on them for protection. The good news is you won't lose any resources if you're defeated during the event. Now let's talk about strategies for players. You want to monitor your targets. Always check who Joe's troops are targeting, especially during waves that focus on your HQ. Next, you want to maximize your troop strength. Before the event starts, you can use your troop training boosts if you don't plan to save them for another event. This will maximize your troop numbers and strengthen your defense. You'll likely have some troops end up in the infirmary during the event, but don't heal them since they will remain in your city and take kills away from those who reinforce you. Only heal if you think you'll lose against the wave. Next, you can activate your pet buffs as they'll help you get more kills and allow you to send more troops due to an increased army capacity. Another thing you can do is coordinate with your alliance members. Speak with your alliance leaders and members about forming reinforcement groups. Teamwork is key in this event. Now we can talk about some advanced tips for maximizing points. When you reinforce other players, your troops can earn points for killing Joe's bandits at their base. The stronger the troops you send as reinforcements, the more points you'll likely to earn. In the beginning, you will likely not have enough troops to send out entire marches, so you'll send out an equal amount of infantry, lancer, and marksmen. Over time, you want to focus more on infantry first, then lancer, and finally marksmen. Infantry get the most kills during the event, while marksmen don't contribute to kills except in very few specific cases. You want to look for alliance members who have zero or few reinforcements to gain the maximum points. Otherwise, you'll be competing for points since your troops will not be the only ones defending their city. Next, you want to empty your base. Empty all of the troops from your base by sending them as reinforcements to others. This way, you can earn points from both your own base's defense and from the bases you reinforce. As you get into the later stages of the game and accumulate an even bigger army, you won't be able to send out all of your troops, but that's okay. Next, you want to make sure you aim for 100% of the kills, indicating you've killed all enemy troops to get the maximum points for your base. Keep checking the battle reports for each battle to monitor your performance. Prioritize reinforcements over HQ. If you don't think you can make it through all the waves, don't force it. Reinforcing your allies' bases is more important in this strategy. So now let's talk about group strategies and difficulty levels. As mentioned earlier, you want to send out an equal amount of troops and also receive an equal amount of troops. So for example, if you have 180,000 troops, you want to send out three marches of 60,000 each and also receive 60,000 back from three other players, totaling 180,000 troops. Now let's talk about each phase. In rounds 1 to 10, you want to keep the strongest heroes that you have in your home base while you send out everyone else. Now let's talk about each phase of the event. In phase 1, you have waves 1 to 10. Send your first march, which are your second strongest heroes and troops, to one group member and your second march to another. Ensure that your base is only reinforced by your group members. And from rounds 11 to 20, after defending the HQ on wave 10, you can recall your troops from the HQ and redistribute them so each group member's base holds a larger reinforcement army. Also, be mindful of the difficulty level you choose for the event. 
Higher difficulty levels offer more points, but are also harder to complete. Levels 17, 18, and 19 account for 31% of the total points. To maximize your alliance's score, aim to have as many people as possible reach at least level 17. If your alliance struggles with higher difficulty levels, it's better to choose a lower difficulty where everyone can survive all waves. This way you can collectively earn more points than if many members get defeated early on at a higher difficulty. Together, you and your alliance must gain points in order to advance to the next difficulty level and get more rewards based on these points. To wrap things up, the Crazy Joe event is all about teamwork and smart strategies. By coordinating with your alliance, maximizing your troop strength, and effectively reinforcing each other, you can earn a ton of points and get amazing rewards. I hope these tips help you dominate the Crazy Joe event in Wild Survival. Do you have any exclusive strategies? Share them in the comments and join our official Discord for more tips. Stay tuned for the next video. Whiteout Survival. Play free now.